All right, welcome, kids, to uh, yet another edition of the VGF uh, podcast series, uh, Strat Corner. And this time, uh, I think uh, Dan will be masturbating with Esam. Esam, yes. What's up, kids? Special <laughs> guest stars, yes. The people who know how to play all games. I think, uh, I think that's where you come from, whatever land that is. Well, the good games, anyway. Oh, Zing. Zing. <laughs> no, what what are these uh, good games again, Praytel? Well, let's see. There's Soul Calibur. Uh, End of list. Um, <laughs> okay, yeah, no. All right, no, games was wrong. This is a singular list, Soul Calibur. <laughs> and it isn't even Soul Calibur. It's Soul Calibur 2. Yeah, not even. Yeah, well, I'll, I'll, I'll let him get away with Soul Calibur 4. That's all right. So, yeah, two games, and they're both Soul Calibur. <laughs> so, are, uh, are you pumped for Com- Calibur, complete. the new one, then? I am. I've heard a lot of good things. Yeah. Uh, uh, some of the changes, you know, just to make more more kids want to get in, and I'm okay with. They're, they're not my favorite, like adding supers and EX bars and all that stuff. But as far as I can tell, it's going to be a good good game. That's good. Let's hope it goes. Is Hild still there? Well, I don't know. I heard Hild is out. Uh, I haven't gotten the confirmation from anybody at Namco, but... WC Maxi's back on the team, or at least in a in some part. So I'm someone happy there about to that. make sure it's okay. <laughs> yep. Otherwise he'll, he'll smack kids too. If Hild comes into the game and she isn't broke as fuck, I'm gonna be pissed. <laughs> <laughs> like fuck this game, snap throw. Nice. Uh, I really hope it's good because I, I although I didn't uh, I wasn't like the best at it or anything. I did enjoy playing Caliber too, so it was fun. And then like three and. For it, I mean, it just got ridiculous with all the glitches and shit and all this crazy ass shit you could do. Yeah. Fuck. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, Tekken. So Pretty Tekken. good game too, I guess. <laughs> hey. Oh yeah? Is that right, mister? <laughs> Not really. <laughs> we finally have someone on here who can hate Tekken. Yes, I love that. Yes, a, a Tekken podcast where we have guests that hate the game. Only that's here. True. That's, that's my PSN name too, if any kids want to add me. You saw him hates Tekken. Nice. There you go. And you can add a guy who's probably probably true. Nobody will play Soul Calibur with me. <laughs> it's a damn shame. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well. Um, and you're welcome. Yeah. Oh, thanks. You're welcome. <laughs> uh, so I guess uh, for all the the kids out there who somehow don't know you, uh, why don't you give us a, a brief background, like how long you've been playing? And obviously, you know, we just chatted about Caliber, so people should have figured out by now you're a Caliber player. But you play everything. Discuss. Yeah. Well, I, at one point or another, I played everything. I, you know, I came up in the uh, Street Fighter two days, and that was my first tournament. But uh, when I moved to Minnesota, probably almost ten years ago now. Uh, I met Dan, and they were all playing Soul Calibur 2 at the time, so crossing between, I was playing some Soul Calibur and Tekken, they taught me how to play tag, and that Tekken 4 that everybody hates. <laughs> queers. Dan. Just queers. <laughs> Where did you uh, live before Minnesota? Uh, everywhere, really. I was uh, I was born in Ohio, and uh, we lived overseas for many years, lived in Egypt and Morocco and Switzerland and all sorts of places. And then uh, when I came back to the States, we lived in Utah, and then I moved here. I hate you. <laughs> everywhere. No fair. Utah. <laughs> yeah, Utah. So, uh, so you dig the monogamy, or no? <laughs> That's the question. Uh, I'm also Muslim, so, you know, we got the... That's optional. The four thing. Uh, optional. optional of <laughs> Hilarious. Well, good. Okay, so uh, now everyone knows who you are. Um, and hey, Isam, what's your screen name on uh, Soul Calibur? Uh, Suck-a-foo. <laughs> All also, right. Aw, Isam, a.k.a. Awesome. <laughs> I like how you kids have, like, multiple forum names and stuff. I, I actually but, thought it was just going to be Esam. Hey, Esam, what's your name? Esam. <laughs> oh, it's that too, yeah. <laughs> it's, been, it's been all of the above at some point or another. He has ten fucking forum names. <laughs> I, I do. Uh, what, what game are you maining right now? That's what they really want to know. Yeah. Uh, Tekken 6. <laughs> League of Legends. <laughs> oh, that's true, yeah. All right, yeah. Counting PC games, League of Legends, good game. Go download it. Come play with us. Yeah, and as they keep telling me, it's free. So it is it. free. It's free. Whatever. <laughs> well, uh, there you go. That's uh, great information. Uh, so since you just said you uh, you're main in that Tekken, <laughs> let's talk some Tekken. And Dan, you better be excited for this because it's your boy. Wow. Back off. 
or as we like to call him, Dr. Agonoff, for all you scrubs out there. No. Play the Dr. Agonoff. Dr. Agonoff. Got a PhD in pain. <laughs> there you go. I like it. So uh, for the little uh, – for you uh, you're a little new to this, Esam, so I'll kind of uh, refresh. What we do is we usually start out and we give a little uh, – little summary for those kids out there who uh, just, like, want to remember one or two sentences about a character so that they can kind of quickly refresh themselves in the tournament atmosphere, I guess you could say. So uh, with Dr. Agnoff, it's, uh, it's a little tough. Uh, really, the only thing that I have um, is that he's, uh, he's kind of an average tracker and, and average in speed, I guess. But, I mean, he's, re- he's one of those characters. He's just good at everything. Uh, he's not the greatest. You can boil it down to one sentence, and that is running two. Running two. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Agonoff is running two. <laughs> if you get nothing else out of this podcast, you should get Run two. running two. Oh, God, I hope Eris listens to this. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait for the forums to blow up with this one. Whereas we, we dispelled all the goodness of Lars, we will now talk about running two's greatness. <laughs> there Sorry, are, kids. You're retarded. A it's of, good. A <laughs> lot of running two haters out there, I know. I don't know how oh, people don't understand how good that move is. Well, there is a reason that the average IQ is 100. I'll just I'll put it that oh, way. There he goes. God, I knew we had him on for a reason. So if you're sitting there <laughs> saying to yourself, running two isn't that good, he's talking about you. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Dan. Well, let's, uh, let's just get into it then. Um, so hit me up with some punishers. So what's, uh, what would you do in each situation? Let's go with the standing and the while standing. All right. And hit him up with the knowledge. Confront me. Give me a, give me a frame to start okay, with. Okay, so uh, ten frames. One three, and it is the craziest. The craziest. <laughs> yes, it it it's a it isn't like the greatest ten frame punisher. It's not like a one one two or even a Bruce one four three, but it sets up Dragonoff's entire game. I don't do it enough as a punisher. I usually end up doing like a one one because you can just sit there and mash it, and then you're at plus eight, which is fucking scary against Dragonoff, as counter hit strong as he is, but. 1-3 is where it's at, on block, on hit, whatever. It pushes him away where Dragonoff is stronger than you are. Dragonoff's entire game is range. Absolutely. And then uh, and then 12 frames, it starts getting really dirty. <laughs> yes. Kids be crying over that 4-1. It isn't like a Lars 4-2-4 uh, four, four ah. wall stun into your ass, but it's plus 8, it's a chunk, and again, Dragonoff is so counter-hit strong, he will fucking kill you if you move. And I, I, that's a, definitely a running theme with all of his uh, his punishers uh, out there for you kids who don't uh, get any Dr. Agonov practice. He uh, he is super counter hit heavy, and especially with his uh, you know his whole game is range and counter hit. It's uh, it's nasty, and it's almost better for him to be at plus frames uh, than to just have like damage and just knock you down. Plus eight is more than don't fuck around frames. Yeah. That's hold your fucking breath and. If you can, try to plug the other end with your thumb. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, he doesn't have anything special at 13, right? Just uh, skips to 14, I believe? Uh, at 13, you should just keep doing 4-1, mm-hmm. but yeah. And same with 14, I believe, right? 14, he can do um, he can do forward 4-4, four, four, and that'll do more damage than 4-1, but 4-1 is better for the frames again. That, <laughs> that tells you something about how good 4-1 is. That, that you keep doing it even when you're at 14. But I guess I've heard it's possible you can do a uh, quarter circle forward both punches at 14, but don't consider that, like, reliable. Wow, that's that's nasty. I didn't realize that it was that fast. Instant shoulder. It's 12 frames. Nice. Oh, okay, I see what you're saying. I thought you were talking about his big fucking elbow. I was like, whoa. No. Oh. The justice long range I punch. got you. You're talking instant while standing shoulder. Okay. Yep. Gotcha. Well, at least, you know, uh, back to the wall, you know, if you run into a dra- uh, Dragonoff player who can do that shit, you know, be careful, because that's wall flat and that's, that's nastiness. You're playing with your ass. Yeah, pretty much. And then 15, he starts launching you. Down 4-2, which is... And that is a good one. Yeah, very much so. Down 4-2 gets him 70-plus uh, damage. Be afraid. And uh, correct, I know... Um, it, does it track just one way, or because I think it tracks really good to his right, but yeah. you can step it to the to his left. Okay, that, that's what I, that's what I thought. I was like, I know, I think it's linear one way, but obviously we're talking about punishers. But just in general, I really like his down four two because you know it does track that one way and it launches mid 
which is really nasty. But, you know, he doesn't have a hop kick, so I guess he needs it. So. Uh, okay, yep. so while standing, so at uh, uh, 10... Hold on. Oh, go ahead, please. Once you hit 19, say you blocked a death fist or whatever, Dragonop has one of the best long-range punishers there is in the forward both punches. Ah, that's okay. Oh, yeah, forward 12. That shit is retarded. And actually, I think if, if you're really uh, good at doing, like, the quarter circle one, that's even faster than forward both punches. I think that's a frame faster. That's uh, that's his electric, right? His electric. His electric. Character's so good at range that they had to give him an electric, too. I love <laughs> I really do. It's it's really cool. <laughs> Thanks. It's that, that pimp backhand, like, stun. Yep. Thank you. Where's my monkey? And it's only a minus one on block if, if you're just throwing it out. Yeah, it's fucking nasty, for sure. Anything else to add to the standing punishers? Nope, nope, that's it, I'm done. That's it. Shut, shut me the fuck up. No, that's okay. That's, that's not enough for you. That's uh, that's yeah. worthy. <laughs> that's very much worthy. Okay, so the wall standing stuff. So uh, at 11, he gets his wall standing four, and then 12, that's when the real games begin. Yes. When you start hitting shoulders, this is, for my money, the best uh, wall standing move in the game, the shoulder. That shit punishes things nobody else can punish. It's because it's so fast, but it also has, like, the range, too. Most characters, you can, like, sit there and throw out your generic little 12-frame low kick, and nobody, and, like, you can't really do anything about it. And Dragonoff can always kill you for it. And I, I have to agree. I've felt the pain of that move <laughs> many, many times. When you're just, uh, when you're throwing, you have to be really careful, because, like, most people don't realize, you know, you throw out your little, uh, your little poke or whatever, and you think it's only while standing for punishing, or punishable, and then you get rocked by a shoulder. Yeah, there's a ton of shit that only shoulder can punish, too. Yes. Yeah. That move is insanely fast. It's so good that even if he had, like, he has his 13-frame uh, while standing 1-3, and it does, like, I don't know, five more damage, whatever. Don't even You don't even have to get in the habit of going for more damage. You can just, shoulder's consistent. I don't even have to think about it, whatever. That's true. And I, I would... Plus, you're going to get a wall combo if you're anywhere near it, too. So, yeah. there's no reason not to. Absolutely. And if you uh, if you back roll after you've been hit with shoulder, his running two will hit you. <laughs> running two, people. Running two. The wear. Shoulder to running two. Anything to running two. And anything to running two. If you tech rolled after, whatever. I don't know. So running two is just safe to throw out. So does he have anything uh, uh, special at 14? or? Nope, nope. I think he just... Just shoulders, shoulders or while standing one threes until he gets to launching time. Yeah, <laughs> you know that's a uh, that's probably the simplest while standing game <laughs> you'll find out there. Shoulder, shoulder, shoulder. Okay, now I can launch you. Okay, now I'll switch. <laughs> yeah. Fuck the rest. Absolutely. And it's solid damage. That move is just so sick. I mean, they want to stay down. Go ahead, take a stomp. Dragonoff's wake up game is so good. Well, let's talk about that then. Tell tell us your wake ups. Dan, I'd <coughs> well, be scared. Well, if we're still talking about the while standing move, uh, his while standing two is kind of exceptional in a way too. He can get uh, he can get the crazy damage, you know, off of it with you know combos like uh, back four three, uh, one three two, into stuff. But uh, the way that it picks him up, it like uh, flips him face down and everything. You can do crazy tech roll shit. You can kill people with that move because. Uh, the way that they, uh, you can smack him down with, like, back 12. While standing two, back 12. And then you can do any move of his that will, like, put him down. You can do another move that would normally bound them or slam him down. And they can't do anything. He could pick up combo you. I mean, there's tech roll shit that you can do off of that launcher. It's it's exceptional and worth noting off of that alone, too. It's it's another feature to this already powerful juggle starter. Nice. Very Sorry, nice. just wanted to add that. <laughs> no, that's cool. Absolutely. It, I mean, this is uh, this is your baby right here, you know. So, you gotta yep. gotta say what you gotta say. So, uh, so just kind of in general, like, uh, I mean, if you're Dragonov, uh, you know, you just kind of hit us up with uh, with some uh, setups and knowledge. So, I mean, what what should you be if he knocks you down? What what should you be looking out for well, especially in a jump we can, uh, we can continue right after while standing two alright like if he does while standing two and then back both punches and then let's say he does another back both punches cause fucking that shit will hit uh, you're in this situation where you're lying face down and uh, 
you can't really get up at all. I mean, you, you either sit there and you eat a stomp into further wake-up shit, or he can do down two, which will hit grounded. But let's say you felt like getting up that day. Down two while standing four, one, three, two. You're bounded, slam down again. And, and that's a running theme with, with Dragunov, too. Like, there are so many ways that he's going to put you in a really awkward get-up situation. Like, most of his throws will leave you face up and head towards, or feet da- face down and feet towards. So either way you get up, you're probably going to be back turned for a little while. He's just got so many situations that, you know, either way you, you get up, you stay down, you're going to get hurt real bad. Man's right. <laughs> and, that, like, most characters that have, like, uh, they have juggle resets or whatever, and, and I, I'm sure that he has, you know, some... I can't think of them off the top of my head. But, like, uh, you know, they'll do a bound, and then they'll do an extra slow pickup combo to try to, you know, redo the juggle or get more damage than they should. Yeah. He can do that just with, like, wake-up shit. Uh, he can, you know, hit you on the ground, and the mix-ups continue. <laughs> you just wait, like, you thought that you could get away from his shit just by flipping over and not giving up the pickup combo. Well, he hits you on the ground, and then... Running two alone, I mean, let's say that's... <laughs> running no, two, we'll start it again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the, worst, the worst thing that can happen in this situation is, okay, you had to get up and block running two. Now you're at a disadvantage. If you tech rolled in that same type of situation, like pretty much most angles, if Dragunov hits you with down three on the ground, if you tech roll, running two is unbeatable. You have to fucking block it, period. If you tried to interrupt, you're comboed. <laughs> Which is so fucking silly. So silly. But I heard running two isn't that good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't know who told you that, but they lied. <laughs> Dirty fucking liars. And, and even in some situations, if you didn't tech roll and he's still running two, he passed over your body, you can't hit him. <laughs> yeah, in certain situations, you can still hit him. But in yeah. most situations, he's just going to run right by you, and then he's got back turn hop kicks or you know back turn low, down three, whatever it is. He's in a good posi- position, even if he out- overruns you. Yeah, that's when having a, there's no reason not to do it. That's when having a character with like a really, really good long range move, like say Fang Shoulder, really helps you out because then you just like completely eliminate that distance really quickly. But, well, if you're lying on the ground, you can't get up and shoulder in time. Oh, you're talking like after you bound? I'm, I'm saying they're no, they stayed on the ground because they didn't want to have to block running two or play. Running, uh, grab, mixed up, okay. whatever. They just stayed on the ground to try to avoid the shit. He running two went right over their body, and if they did a get-up kick or whatever, he gets either back turn hop kick, back turn kick, back turn low kick that juggle starts. Gotcha. Yeah, depending on, on the angle that he's coming in from and your timing, you can get him with, like, a get-up low kick, but, you know, big deal. It's not going to knock him down. You're not going to get your regular get-up kick combos or anything. It's just going to take a little bit of a chunk off of him, and he's like, no, I'm fine with that. I got running two again. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. Yeah, I think it's a little... I heard running two sidesteppable. Ooh. Yeah, that's something to be afraid of. <laughs> <laughs> sort of. Well, you know what? Let's talk about that for a second, because I know that uh, that's one of those things that people people cry about when they're talking about running two. They're like, well, you could sidestep it, blah, 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 blah. So hit us up with, uh, oh. with that knowledge. I'll let you guys talk about that one. You guys have played some Dragon. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I remember. Yeah, you can, some, you can theoretically sidestep it. Let's put it that way. Uh, you're betting your life on whether or not you can do it 100% of the time if you're going to try it. Like, if you know he's going to do a running two right here, and you say to yourself, well, I can sidestep it, well, you, you're taking your life into your hands. That's very, very true. And it's, and it's all timing, you know? Like, it's not one of those things where you can just throw out a sidestep and then it happens. Oh, look, a sidestep. Right. It's, yeah. And, like, uh, I know you mentioned a, a while back, Dan, you know, and I've noticed this in playing uh, against this character, that I mean, it's all about his timing as well. You know, I mean, if he times it right, you can't step it. <laughs> it will hit you. So. It's like the uh, electric. People say you can sidestep electric, and, and you can, but... The mission must have that built-in motion, just like Dragon Up has his running motion. He can just keep running an extra step to realign with you or whatever. Or he can mess with the timing more than you can. It, just running, Dragon Up running at you all by itself is a mix-up. And that's a that's a good theme for uh, kind of any move that has that motion. For any of those uh, intermediate players or beginning <laughs> players or whatever out there that are listening to this, you know, if you have a motion inside of the move uh, mo- notation. You can use that to, even if the move itself isn't all that good of a tracking move. You can use that to help you track, and that really applies to anything, especially like forward forward moves. People like to yep. complain about certain forward forward moves being, you know, sidesteppable or whatever. Well, yeah, sure. I mean, they can theoretical 
theoretically, but I mean, if you mess with the timing on the forward forward, you can realign yourself. So it's not as big of a deal as some would make it. You up. can you can even stretch that comment to moves that just require back or just require forward. You can just hold the direction for a little while and then hit the button. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. It's not like a big deal that Lars has a back one. <laughs> Sorry, kid. <laughs> I could just hold back two and then do a move, and it'll track a little better. <laughs> oh, there you go. Getting, getting your little dose of Lars hate in every time. There you go, Pierce. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, uh, I should say that I, I definitely hate the pickup garbage because uh, when he can just sit there and do, like, while standing one, then down one, then while standing one, down one, <laughs> and you just got to, if you just even mess up your get up, even by a fraction of a second, he'll lift you up. Pretty. A low jab begins combo. Yeah, pretty, pretty fucking silly with that garbage. But all right, well, uh, ultimately, yeah, that's a good strategy to try to sidestep the running two or whatever. You got You got to force dragon off. Like if we're talking the anti dragon off strat, yeah, you got to force him to throw out running two earlier than he wants by you know say throwing out magic four. Magic four is the anti dragon off move. That's why I love it so much and everything, but you want to try to make him throw out running two earlier than he wants to so that you can either just backdash it or you want to, you know, try to mix up your timing for when you're sidestepping, shit like that, because if, if he does miss it, you, you get to fucking kill Dragonoff, there's no question about it, it's just, the reason that it's still good, still usable, is he controls the timing, he controls how it happens, it's no big deal that you can sidestep it, because he can just run up and grab you, or he can just do it slower. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I think, uh, just... I mean, even though, you know, you're talking about the, uh, you know, evasion properties of that move, <coughs> evasive properties, you know, running two, I mean, it just has such upside when it does hit, whether you block it or it just hits, you know, it leaves him in such a good position. So it's just one of those things that you ha you have to use it, you know. That normal hit gives him like a stomp or a shoulder. Yeah. <laughs> And Big deal. And puts you in that fucking retarded ass Oki game that he has. Uh, not to mention, just the move by itself does crazy retarded damage. So, and even if you do block it, he's at plus half a million frames. So, yeah. <laughs> that's it's the actual his, notation. I just game. looked that up. Half yeah, a million. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I think it's the highest in the game. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it could be. Yeah. All right, forum kids, argue against me. Running two is the best move in the game. <laughs> Can't wait to hear it. <laughs> I like how you're just putting that out. I, I do uh, I do heart running too, and I think it's a great move. Best move in the game. Ooh, that's that's gonna be tough. If it uh, if it juggled on regular hit like it did in six point <laughs> for sure. I don't know about best move in the game, but I, I just got my vote for best move in Dragon House move list. <laughs> well, there you go. Well, that's, is that well, your... What are you guys putting up as best move in the game? Oh God, such a tough one. There are a lot. But Bruce is back too. <laughs> they, that's a, that's a good one. one. That, is, that is a very, very, very good move. Hmm. I don't even know if I have one. I've never like. I, I don't think I've ever really asked myself that question. <laughs> what is the best don't one? don't be one of the four kids. It's like no, it isn't. But no, you know what? I changed my vote. My my favorite is now Rainbow Drops. Oh, well, there you go. Rainbow Drops. Yeah, Rainbow <laughs> Drops. The like Rainbow. <laughs> oh, funny! I don't, I don't, man, I'll, I'll throw my vote with that. I like that. That, that sounds good on the resume. Rainbow drops. <laughs> I like how that sounds. <laughs> well, uh, okay. So running two, massive damage, awesome move. I don't think. It's and uh, once people start getting, uh, like they, once you've got enough experience against running two, or you're playing an opponent that's good at running two. You could start throwing out running fours. It tracks a little bit better. It's not plus a billion, but the spacing is really good. And on normal hit, it does like 60 fucking damage. Or running three them and get your auto throw. Oh, no, running four. Oh, yeah, you could do that too from farther away. Running three, slide. <coughs> Absolutely. Yeah, that's pretty fucking nasty. And that's, uh, you know, that's kind of a theme with everything with that we've said so far that we, uh, that we should definitely talk about is just his damage alone. When he hits you, he hits you hard. And, uh, it's a little unfair with the, like, his Oki, like, how good his Oki is, and he has all these stomps, and then he picks you up again, and, I mean, you don't have to fuck up very many times for him to win. <laughs> and it's not just regular juggle, you know, oh, you fucked up, I launched you shit. It's, 
it's nasty mids that are just putting you in really bad situations after hitting you for a large chunk of your life. Yep, yep. Yeah. And you have to constantly take like an active defense stance against him. You can't just say to yourself, I'm going to just sit here until he's done. Because a lot of his shit leaves him in such a good situation where he can keep going or he can switch to one of his many good panic buttons. And that transfers over to really every part of his game, too. You know, the uh, just his reg regular pokes do decent damage. Uh, his big mid-hitters, you know, the back 12 garbage and stuff like that just hits really hard. Running two hits really hard. And then it also transfers into his juggles. You know, he's getting into the 70s, 80s easy. You know, it's not really not really a lot to it and he's getting all this crazy damage and then if he gets you to the wall and he also has good wall carry you know so he gets you to the wall and he gets even more damage you know and still puts and you he doesn't in. even have to juggle you to to do some of this massive damage he can do hit confirmable one two one yeah he doesn't even have to be unsafe to do this big massive damage to you i mean a lot of his really massive damaging moves end at the most in you know minus four and at the best plus five or six just keep pounding away. And I, it's what I keep saying to the kids, you know, like on the boards, whatever, is Dragonoff's uh, range makes up for so much shit that, like, when you when you play against him, you have to take an active defense. Like like I was just saying, like 3-1, uh, you have to be looking at that and thinking, okay, I'm going to duck this. Or if I want to deal with 1-1-3, uh, one, one, I want to duck the second hit and then try to interrupt before the three. I don't know, some shit like that. Or punish you it. Have don't to take, forget, punish it. Punish what? 1-1-3. One, one, Safe. You sure? I thought that was totally. Possible. That shit is totally safe. <laughs> uh, oh, negative eight. Okay, sorry. I thought it was jabs. <coughs> My bad. Uh, even at minus eight, it's it pushes so far away that that's true. He can get around a. It's not like he's really in don't fuck around frames or anything. And that's a. Uh, I uh, like how you know that you mentioned the um, you know d the active uh, defensive you know stance with him and you know watching the ducks and. All this other stuff because he, if I mean if you're looking to get around some of Dragnaut stuff, a lot of his strings, especially the really really nasty ones, there is a, p a piece of it that you can usually duck or sidestep yep. or or whatever it is. And you know it's not always the same with every string, but I mean you have to keep that like you said, you have to keep that in the back of your mind. Like okay, if this comes out, I need to be ready and I need to be ducking and punishing. So. And a lot of those strings, though, do have sort of the mix-up built into the string, so it might be mid-mid-high or uh, high-mid-high or whatever, but he can switch up the last one to make it an extra mid, so he can really throw off your timing, even if you are looking for those positions to duck. Like back 4-2 uh, or back 4-3? Mm -hmm. Exactly. And the, I don't know, like, first you have to say to yourself which one you're going to defend against, and then... Because the way his game is built, it's not like like his frames aren't that good unless you're blocking running two or back one plus two. Um, it just everything leads into something else is is the whole thing. Like the three hit strings. I mean, okay, you didn't duck the the back four two, but he still has that third hit that he could throw out for plus four or whatever. Mm -hmm. He he just has options. He, like Nina, we were talking about all the stuff that she has. She has options. Dragonoff actually has more options. They're just not as rewarding as hers are. Yeah. He could just keep doing shit. I uh, I can definitely get on board with that. And then I you also mentioned the range, which is a really important uh, topic when you're talking about Dragonoff because that is his whole game. You know, you said it, it makes up for a lot of his weaknesses. Well, it, I totally. mean, his range game is is just retarded. And we were talking, you know, we were discussing, you know, best move in the game. Well. My vote for best low in the game is down two. I mean that that move is retarded. Good. I mean it does. That, that, that goes on my list too. That, down two is too good. That gives two. you a float. Gives you juggles if you hit it on counter hit. Good stuff like that. Or, or in certain situations, yeah. Um, but like that's actually a good uh, point for the a good move to bring up for what I'm talking about with the active defense. If you start playing all of these other options and Dragonoff's range is so good that like just approaching him with backdash in mind or sidestep in mind. You, he has so many other tools that will, uh, you know, compensate for that type of thing, like down to what you're bringing up. The best way to deal with someone who likes to whore down to, as Esam always shows off, is you have to backdash that move. Try to look for some kind of whip punish on it. It's a really good way to deal with it. Top five uh, best low moves in the game, for sure. And it's only zero on hit. Yeah. But if you backdash it, I mean, you can hurt him, but 
that just plays into every other part of his game because he has moves like forward uh, three or whatever, and he can just keep abusing long range moves all day if, if you're not, you know. So you have to pick your poison. Do I do I want to play against the range? Do I want to play against this? Do I want to play against his insane tracking game? Yeah, and I I he, just hate the fact that his like all of his limbs are just retardedly long. You know, like his down forward four goes way farther than it should, way farther. Like that mm-hmm. that move is too good to be that long range. I mean, he's like kicking that puts his off screen. It's retarded. Puts him in his uh, his situation again. Whether you blocked it or whether you got hit, it puts you at exactly Dragon Ops range where he's going to hit you more often than you're going to hit him. Yeah, he gets to ignore frame situations. That is very true, very very true, uh, and especially, I mean, that's why he's so counter hit heavy, you know, because he can, he has that option and he has that range gain, a little bit of a pushback on like. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, I'm sorry to I'm sorry to just gush about my character so much. I'm sure a lot of these kids are gonna, you know, oh well, Dragonoff doesn't have this. Well, he doesn't have that. Well, I think actually. He has a lot more than what people say. I'm not saying he's top tier, but he definitely has, like, he has mix-ups that people don't even know that they're playing. I was telling Isam about this on the ride back, like, down four. That's actually a mix-up, that whole series, even though uh, all of his options end in highs. And basically, uh, like, down four, four. If you try to do anything after you block the down four, you're getting fucking killed. It's, it's going to hit you. You could low jab after you block that and still get hit with down four. Hmm. But then, uh, like, if... If you wait too long, you can't punish down four on block, and that's like launch punishable. The down. Four. So then he, yep. And then he also has his down four one three series. All right, let's say you didn't duck in time. The one is going to jail you, so that the four is, you know, so that the, you can't duck the third hit, the four. But let's say he doesn't do the four because that would leave him at minus fourteen. He could just do that, and you're sitting there waiting for a hit that isn't going to come out. And if you don't act fast on your punishment, you're not going to get it. So it. It never really leaves him in, like, a positive situation, but you have to play, like, a, a defensive mix-up mm-hmm. of sorts. That's where it really helps to have, like, a long-range 12 punisher, 12-frame 12 punisher. You know, like, uh, so many characters now have a generic back 1-2 of some sort, <clears throat> and most of the time those things reach out, like, a long range. It's, those are the situations that they're made for, too. So even if you have the pushback to kind of click. But a lot of characters don't have them, you know, so you got to... Got to really be careful about those. And then most people don't even know that you can uh, finish down four one three on, uh, like, if you see that it's a counter hit, you can finish it on reaction. Hmm. I didn't know that actually. And that is a that is a fifteen frame tracking low move that is finishable on reaction for like almost fifty damage. I think uh, all of all the hits of that strain track, correct? I believe they all do. You are probably right. Because, I, I mean, they're all, like, spinning fucking moves. <laughs> so I would imagine that they all fucking, fucking track in some way, shape, or form. And then uh, uh, you mentioned uh, panic buttons. Uh, so hit us up with some panic buttons. Where, I mean, one two one. everybody knows about one two one. But uh, one two one is the pain. Yeah. To hit us up that's with some other stuff. So. That's basically his magic four. I mean, he does have counter hit goodness that he could do with his four. I like to even just throw out four one because it jails. But, you know, he's also got the 4-3, so if that's counter hit, and it leads to a free stomp, and again, the the chase down game. But then 1-2-1 uh, is probably, like, his magic 4, because he can just do 1-2, and then if he sees that it's counter hit, he can finish it on reaction. And that's a good fucking chunk of damage. That's huge. And if you didn't tech, if you didn't tech roll afterwards, you're in a terrible, terrible, terrible wake-up situation. If you did tech roll, you just blocked running 2, and you're fucked again. <laughs> <laughs> or worse yet, you had your back at the wall and the wall spot you. Yeah, <laughs> or he just he just run and grabbed you. You're playing a mix-up after that hits, no matter what, whether you think you are or not. And he has a lot of uh, he has a quarter circle back too. Everyone knows about this, the evasive elbow of doom. Yeah, that thing is nasty. It's only minus twelve on block, but uh, really, it's going to whiff more often than not. If if someone's expecting it, they're just standing there. That's going to whiff. You get to launch and punish him. So yeah, and most characters. That was terrible. Yeah, most characters. Even if you back dash away from it, you're still in range to punish the whiff. So yeah, it's pretty slow recovering there. But it's still there, and that's the point. <laughs> and that's a down two. His abusable uh, tech crouch move leaves him at uh, zero on normal hit, but it's his mix up afterwards. It's not yours. <laughs> Down one, both of those. Down one and down two. 
forcing people to crouch. It's too good. Oh, yes. Mm-hmm. Down one is another great. Uh, it's it's so good that nobody ever talks about it because he has so much other good. I don't know. And uh, you actually, uh, a good segue uh, into another topic. You said, you know, the running grab issue, his grab game just in general is ridiculous, you know. Like, there's, I mean, he has a couple of grabs that kind of toss you away, but for the most part, I mean, he's standing right over you with... Uh, there isn't a single grab that I would say leaves him bad. Yeah. He has... Yeah, well, he's got, the, the one plus three throw kind of takes you pretty far away, but all the other ones leave you at his feet ready to get pounded. Yeah. But I guess even with the... two plus four one you're talking about, the, where he... Oh, yeah, you like two plus four, yeah, where he, where he kicks you in the chest and you go flying. But see, that's the, that's the thing about that one, though, is if he finds himself in a situation where it doesn't kick him too far, he actually gets, like, free hits. <laughs> Uh, well, even if he, he does, you know, I we were talking, you know, the our theme for this character is running two, and even yep. if he does throw you away, whatever, running two, and if you get up wrong, or, yeah, you're perfect range for yeah and if you just get up wrong or something, he'll hit you in the back of the fucking head with that move. So, he's, <laughs> yep. it's fucking terrible. Like, you, know, you think you're okay because he kicked you away, but you're really not. His, his range game makes up for anything off of that throw, for sure. <laughs> Absolutely. I like to even just do four four two after after the two throw because uh, you can do that at a range where the the low wake up kick won't hit you and get you that juggle or whatever. Mm-hmm. And if they did anything at all, counter hit sixty damage. He gets a free shoulder afterwards. So <laughs> fucking nasty. So nasty. And even back to the, the 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 range theme, like some of his command throws, like four two plus three or whatever, give you that extra ambiguous distance that people just aren't ready for. It doesn't look like a you know a forward one plus three throw. So you don't see that, you know, lunging forward while it's happening. But he's got he's got magnets on his hands when he's doing those command throws. He'll get you that's, from that's pretty much sure. anywhere. And, well, he, and it's a frame faster. Well, he has the uh, uh, the one that you just mentioned. He has the uh, another one, right? Four four one plus four. Is that right? He has one. It's just a forward one, one, forward one, forward one plus four, or forward two plus three. For, but he can do it with forward four, though, can he? Oh yeah, yeah. He can do it that way. Because that's and. Uh, that's one of the reasons Both that, of those throws are hard to see. It's yeah. hard to break those. Well, I was going to say, that's one of the reasons I think, uh, like, Law, his forward forward, or his forward 2 plus 3 is so good, is because you can do it with forward forward. You're essentially doing a dash grab that you don't need an advanced grab for, you know. So it's it's really, really silly, <laughs> those kinds of uh, command grabs that just allow you to do the forward forward. But uh, they're, oh, they're yeah. different breaks, right? One's a 2 and one's a 1, or are they the same break? Yep, yep. They're, they're different breaks, and uh, it helps, like, if you do it the way you were just talking about with the forward-forward, it'll even help uh, mask the forward-forward both punches throw, which, for my money, is one of the top five best throws in the game. Yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty fucking stupid. I'll definitely give you that much. But <laughs> you don't think it's a top five? Oh, no. I, I definitely think <laughs> it's a top five. Um, it's just like... Um, yeah, the the fact I think the reason that it's top five is just for the what you just mentioned the fact that he has other grabs that he can do out of forward forward. Um, if he didn't have those, um, it, I mean, it'd still be a really good grab. But uh, you know, like you said, you can mask the fact that you may be going for the one plus two grab. You know, and any character that can do that that can dash and then they have all three grab break options. I, that's r- a really, really rough situation, you know, to be. In. Well, you could even do that with normal throws. You could just board for uh, and then grab. normal throw, yeah. But it doesn't. Yeah. But because you have to do the neutral, you know, it doesn't mm-hmm. come out quite as fast enough. You, you kind of a little. Dr- I mean, you can just. Uh, it's still good. Don't, don't get me wrong. Yeah. That's why I have to do, do. I mean, with arm because he doesn't have a forward, forward fucking grab. But you know, the, in the grand scheme of things, you know, if you have those those grabs that you can do with forward, forward. You know, it helps. Well, the reason I really like those grabs is because uh, because they come out of frame faster, they're harder to break, and both throws, like if someone's uh, breaking by the opening animations, the forward 2 plus 3 and forward 1 plus 4 throws, they look the fucking same. Uh, it's fucking disgusting. Disgusting <laughs> games. Gotta love. And then afterwards, dragging off again, he doesn't have a single bad wake-up throw. If he does, uh, aside from that one where he kicks him across the screen, the 2 plus 4 throw, he can do forward 4 2 after any of them, and if, you're, if the other person got up, they're bounded. That's just what it is. Any of them. Yeah, that's silly. <laughs> it just is. Uh, so, um, that I think that like covers Doctor Ag <laughs> pretty pretty well. So, I mean, what would your? I mean, I don't want you to give away, you know, trade secrets or anything. But well, I mean, if you were playing against 
uh, another Dragon. But how would I would? And this goes to you, Isan, as well, because I know that you know you play against uh, uh, Doctor Dragonov a lot. So, I mean, what would your best strategy be to try to get around this character and what he can do? You just have to be aware at all times that how just how many frames of advantage he has, and you have to be way more mindful than even the Dragonov player is of that fact that you are probably going to be at negative a bunch of frames, so choose choose your next move wisely. Isam's real good at mixing up the spacing. That's a real important one, too, for fighting against Dragunov. Like, when he's playing the running two game, yeah, you got to make him either do it too early or make him do it too late. Uh, you always want to mix up the, the, the sidestep thing. That's universal for every character, too, but... True. And and know all of your options after his throws too, because most most dragonos are going to be really pressuring you when you're on the <coughs> in that position. Because why shouldn't he? Absolutely. And I know a lot of uh, dragonov players like to do the um, like the silly scrubby frame traps, you know, like with his strings and stuff. Um, mm-hmm. So you have to really be aware of that. And uh, I can't remember who else we were talking. I think we were talking about like Fang or something. But uh, punishing is key. I mean, if he miss anticipates you and he throws out you know the last hit of uh, one of his strings or something you have to punish that you can't let him get away with that shit that's true and uh, like you know with my experience from playing against you like uh, I can't remember what the string is but uh, um, I want to say it's like two like back two one two or something like that and uh, it ends with a mid uh, like a yep. little jab uh, thing. down back two one two yeah and then it's uh and that juggles, you know, that starts to juggle. So, but if you mess it up, I think it's what negative thirteen, something like that. Whatever it is, Minus 14. 14. Well, you know, for yeah. at least for Armor King, uh, I, unless your back is against the wall, I like to do back one two for my uh, fourteen Punisher. Unless again, you know, I have. You get shoulder, right? Yeah, I get shoulder, but like, if I'm in range, the back one two actually gives me a better. Uh, um, a better situation because I get about the same amount of damage and I'm at frame advantage. And I mean, I have I have a shining wizard um, for my running game, but uh, I, I don't really trust <laughs> Armor King's <laughs> running game as much as you know, like a uh, Dragonov player would trust his running game. So, uh, yeah, sure. so I kind I like being in the face, you know, with frames because uh, I have so many grabs. I don't that will reach you from that range. Mm-hmm. So. But, uh, I think uh, the key is 12 frame punishers all around because Dragonop uh, only has two moves that recover at minus 14 and then I think overall I mean he's just 12 frames that's all you get on him for most of the, for the most part Wait, and if you if you're playing a character that has a good 12 frame move I mean you I mean you have to you have to you do have that. To. yeah <laughs> I mean he's he's already getting like even on those 12 frame recovering moves he's already getting like uh more for, okay, I guess he has three moves that recover at minus 14, sorry. But uh, he, he has so many moves that require uh, recover at minus uh, 12 that give him far more damage than he's risking that you want to you want that to add up. Yeah, absolutely. You really do. And learn his 10-hit combo, because it doesn't matter <laughs> what dragon I player <laughs> I've played against, they've all tried to hit me with that freaking 10-hit combo. <laughs> that's, uh, that's what people do. And it's... <laughs> This is the way that players are. It's a good combo. I mean, there's no reason not to use his. I mean, a lot of characters will have kind of crappy ones, but (laughs) Dragonov is good. I like it. (laughs) Eris likes it. He's tried to do it to me a couple times. Uh, But getting back to, we we were talking about the panic buttons. We also have to mention up four, tracking mid-move of justice. Yeah. That's that's a beautiful And safe, completely safe, which is so stupid. (laughs) <laughs> that shit it really me, pisses me off so much it's like why is that move safe I know it's slow as fuck but it has everything else that you want yeah. in a move <laughs> and it's, it, it that just goes with the rest of his spacing stuff is, I mean if you if you're going to try to stop it by interrupting it with that you're playing another mix up yeah. one to one could be killing you now <laughs> and you can't forget about up forward three either that fucking up stupid forward. probably tracks better than up forward four <laughs> you're like oh you did a low at the wall well blah well flat <laughs> Stupid little kick. <laughs> and then uh, another panic button that I don't actually use enough, but is probably one of his best ones, is uh, his up back two. He likes sidesteps and punches at the same time. It, it, but if you sidestep into it, you get a double sidestep. And if he actually gets around something, he gets a free uppercut to your back. Yeah, that's harsh. Yeah, but it's also <laughs> extremely slow and telegraphed. And <laughs> well, it's, 
<laughs> it stuns on counter hit, so I don't know. He's getting he's getting a lot out of it. <laughs> well, back to what you said earlier, you know, options. You know, he still has those options, and uh, and that's that's really key for you know top tier characters in this game, and and even not top tier characters, but like t- characters that are like on that verge, you know, of the high mid area. You know, that they, they have those mm-hmm. options. They have extra options, <laughs> and there's a lot of characters in this game that there's certain situations they they don't have options. <laughs> they don't have anything. You know, and even if they do, it's typically a shitty option. You know, so it's <laughs> options, options, options. You know, you can't uh, can't say enough about uh, having too much at your disposal. Oh no, really, you can't. I mean, he would be probably a uh, more of a middle of the road character. I put him at high mid, but it's it's all these options and everything, and and the fact that uh, he's only really ever at like minus twelve at the most, he gets more more reward than he's risking. Absolutely. I would, I would agree with and, that. And for oh, my money, know, best speaking with, character. Something we haven't mentioned is he's got a ton of reversals and parries that, I mean, even if you are risking something, at least at the front end, you are, you know, knocking hits away. Mm-hmm. Too good. <laughs> <laughs> and I think Lord all, knows I love my punch parry. <laughs> and I think all of his um, his parries and, and reversals, uh, he, I mean, if you're not, ch- I mean, for just the regular reversals, you know, you can chicken out of it. But if they, if any of them actually hit you, I think they all put him in a retarded Oki situation. Yeah, it's, it's just like he did the grab yeah. you or something. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he, get, he can get a free hit off of a lot of them. <laughs> it's really, really stupid. But, you know, that's what makes him so so sexy. Ed. The only low reversal in the game. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Well, you know, he's the doctor for a reason, you know. Yeah. Well, you know, okay. So you say that you uh, that you put him at high mid. Um, I was curious after our last podcast, um, kind of just a, a quick di- discussion about like tiers and stuff. How how many characters? How how do you see the the tiers breaking up? Like, how many characters do you put in top tier? How many are in mid tier, and then how many are in low tier? Like, where where is the range? Well, I think that there's like maybe four or five top tier characters. Okay, and then. At high mid is where probably a lot of the characters are. High mid to normal mid, you can you can kind of gray the area there between you know high mid and mid. Mm. But uh, there's there's a lot of characters that fall into that area. And Dragonoff isn't like the top of the high mid, but he's maybe three in. And that's with, for my money, the best move in the game. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. Because well, I was curious, uh, and I asked the question because a while back. What about Isa? Well, will you add, well, oh yeah, you sound good. <laughs> well, well, for my money, you know, I, I think there's only maybe two characters that I would put at the S tier, like the top of the top, and that would be Law and Brian. But after that, I'd say five five characters per level. Okay, so well, you know, it's interesting, you know, that both of your your opinions on the tier list because you asked, you I mean you mentioned a, a, in another podcast, Dan, you're like, who I, I wonder who you put at low tier, <laughs> you know, and. Uh, yeah. Like, the way that I see the tiers as, uh, it's it, kind of like what Isam says at the top, you know, I have, like, seven or eight characters in top tier with, you know, a couple of them being really, really good uh, and just a smidgen above the rest. And then I have most of the characters, I would say probably, like, 60% of the characters in mid, and then another, like, 15, you know, percent or whatever it is, you know, another five characters or so that are in... Uh, uh, bottom tier, yeah. So, like, most of the characters, as when I look at a tier list in my mind, you know, most of the characters are going to fall into that mid, that huge mid-average bubble, you know, and then you have the other characters on the other end. And uh, I think... There's a bell curve, yeah. There's, I got two in S tier, and then I got two in my FFF tier. <laughs> Ouch, a triple letter tier. <laughs> that's well, I mean, there's so many characters. There's so many characters, you know, you don't get so many letters. So, Zafina and, and uh, uh, Raven make up my bottom tier. <laughs> oh, man. He does this after performing well with Raven. Yeah, I know, right? But, uh, well, I'm, I'm a good player. What can I say? I can make any two character good. Oh, there you That's go. I love <laughs> All those years of Soul Calibur. True. Playing bad games makes you good at playing bad characters. <laughs> uh, wow, I love this banter. Very, very nice. <laughs> but I would agree with you, Dan. I would say he's right on the cusp of uh, of top tier. I actually put him probably like the the first character in line for top tier. Um if another one were to get, somehow get booted out, you know. But, uh, mm-hmm. 
And then, you know, you were talking about how you think Mishima's are trash. Well, Mishima's in, on my tier bubble are actually in the mid. You know, they're like run of the mill, but they're not garbage. Oh, no. Yeah, I've got them in normal mid. I call them trash because I can beat them out. <laughs> back in uh, back in DR, uh, Dragonoff had he had no bad matchups until I saw the Mishimas. <laughs> they were just so fucking broken. I mean, I felt like I had been missing out on the entire universe. I was crushed. It happened at uh, Strong Style in uh, NorCal or whatever. I here I am thinking Dragonoff has no bad matchups because even his worst matchup at the time, Ling, because uh, she her Phoenix could go under everything. I found out he has the chops, and they just crush phoenix stance and everything and as it turns out any bullshit character it just crushes them but uh then i found out about mishimas and exactly how good they were and now that mishimas are down to like a nice healthy mid it's it's no trouble at all and dragon has been boosted so much very nice so uh, so where do you put him uh Isan? is he uh is he in your top list or you know he's just outside of the top for me he, I mean, he's so strong, does so much damage, controls the flow of a fight. I mean, that's all the things that you look for in a top tier character. He has them to some degree. So, yeah, right outside of top tier. See, that's that's what I like. All of us, we, we're pretty much in agreement. He's not quite top, but he's right out there. <laughs> I, well, I think most He, he doesn't have the mindless BS that some of the top tier characters do. I mean, he's like stuff you, you can just phone in and you will win. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny, because... If you look at, like, the boards or whatever, they pretty much universally agree he's low, maybe mid. Well, well which is weird. Most kids are dumb. What can, what can you do about it? I heard their uh, IQ's 100. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. I, I heard that, too. I, I just got that bulletin. <laughs> okay, so uh, so is there anything, last uh, little nuggets of truth that you want to... I will just, uh, I, I would end off with, you know, you have to constantly, uh, he, he's almost like a... Soul Caliber character where you have to take active defense on everything. You have to say, okay, 3-1, it's mid-high, I want to duck that every time, or, you know, back 2-1, whatever. You you want to look at those moves and keep them in mind at all times, but you always want to mix up your range on him. That's his number one thing, because if he, if he never has to mix up his range, there's no game he can't play with you. And people always comment on his tracking. It really isn't as bad as people are making it out to be. Oh no, absolutely. And I, uh, I should, because I, I, I said something earlier, you know, about his uh, his tracking and everything. Um, I definitely don't want people out there to think that he's a bad tracker, not in in any sense of the word. But uh, it's one of those things where he has some things that you can get around. So you know, you have to. Yeah. It's not like uh, you know, with Steve, who's like fucking impossible to get around. Or like uh, even Raven, I noticed like a lot of his uh, his stuff. You know, like he doesn't really have a problem tracking, at least when I was playing him. So, <laughs> but uh, you know, Jin Jin is another one of those main characters that's just just really really hard to sidestep him. But uh, yeah. you know, and Dragon has a lot of the, that bullshit that can get you. But there are s- situations where you can get around him. So yeah, but he's got lows, he's got mids, he's got highs. They all track. Yep. He's got options. In running two, you can sidestep it, but you're playing with your life. Yep, he's got those options. That's all. Well, uh, Isam, as uh, as somebody who plays against Dragonov a lot, anything uh, you wanted to add? Some uh, final notes? Uh, practice your instant running, because uh, <laughs> anybody who doesn't think running two is a good move is playing against people who aren't doing instant running twos very well. <laughs> I like that. So uh, okay, well then that'll that'll put a wrap on uh, on Doctor Aganov. Uh, so do you got uh, you got our uh, our low Perry um, mistress? <laughs> low Perry bound combo yeah, coming up. Low, Hang on, low Perry mistress. Yes, people love this segment. Hello. 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 <laughs> All right, back to one dash one dash one forward four four three. For max damage. For max <laughs> damage. <laughs> oh, why do I love that segment so much? I'm so glad you uh, you uh, just ran. That's how it should be. <laughs> <laughs> it really should. Uh-oh. If we ever get, like, major sponsorship, we're going to have uh, girls in bikinis reading them off, too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> BM, that's just for us. UFC has the, the girls walking around with the sign, round two. This is our thing. Ladies doing low parries. <laughs> nice. I, I love it. I love it too much. Okay, well, uh, so random time, random time. Um, something we have yet to say during this podcast is uh, brought to you Extend. by Extends. 
Oh, man, jinx. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> that's unfair. It's like we came at the same time. Yeah, we did. Well, that's, you know, that's, how, that's uh, perfection. You know, that's what, how you want it to happen. Both parties. Neither one of us even looked into the other one's eyes until that exact moment. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so uh, anything out there that's uh, interesting you, Dan? Any random topics? That's uh, I like this guy at four. Yeah, uh, you know what? I, uh, I'm not a huge RPG guy, but uh, I was watching, you know, you uh, fucking around with that game, and uh, it looks neat. <laughs> I'll definitely tell you that much. It looks. But other than that, I got nothing. <laughs> that's that's it. Oh, you know. I got okay. My- so the last uh, podcast we we talked about that fight. Did you see all that garbage, Isam, with the break? No. What happened? Oh. <laughs> I was, oh man. I was gonna ask him what he thought about it, but uh, well, I posted the link uh, up in our uh, the thread for the podcast. Uh, Uh-oh. <laughs> I should have done my homework. I'm sorry. That's my bad. No, no. That, it was after the, <laughs> the last podcast because uh, we talked about it a little bit. But um, uh, summarized very, very briefly, um, people were playing Marvel, and uh, because of that fact, somebody got punched. And uh, Which is how it should be. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that game should come with that as a pre-order. <laughs> Here's your oh, game. Yep. <laughs> Is your game man a slap to the face? <laughs> oh man, uh, it just the hate continues. How many podcasts in a row? Oh, dude, every single podcast will have some Marvel hate to it because that game sucks so much. Uh, I I just can't say how how much it sucks in in words. You know, it's just it's just this abstract concept that other people just don't seem to seem to appreciate. <laughs> But well, they're coming out with that uh, Mortal Kombat, the new one, coming out pretty soon. But I like, don't think enough people will be playing that to make it worse than NBC. Like, it's a bad game, but so many people play NBC, and it's a bad game. So yeah. you know, you have to hate on NBC. Yeah, and that's kind of, and that's. I almost feel like that's why people play Marvel is because it's fucking so bad. <laughs> Whereas, like, you know, Mortal Kombat, like you know, the developers actually wanted it to be a good game, <laughs> but it's not. Oh, yeah. No, they definitely took the easy way out with NBC. I mean, they had Tatsunoko versus Capcom. They're like, well, we've got this engine anyway. And people will notice that we've just used the exact same engine with, with a palette swap. Yeah, and that's exactly what they did, too. That is yeah. so fucking I mean, it's, it's a Wii exclusive. I mean, how many people are playing fighting games on the Wii anyway? <laughs> oh, man. Smash Nobody's ever seen this before. Smash I know. I don't know what you're talking about. Smash people are playing. <laughs> no, they're too busy. Those kids will play their fucking game for 20 years, and in that same amount of time, they will only have had, like, two fucking haircuts. <laughs> and zero showers. Hey, thank you. I was just about to say. Fucking <laughs> Oh, man. And that's oh, cool. yes. For anybody going out to Evo this year, just stay away from that section of kids <laughs> playing their Smash. It was, well, there's, like, what? how many games are at Evo? It's it's five, and, the, and that's on there. Uh, yeah. Well, well, I, don't actually, I don't know if uh, Melee is an official game this year, but there's always, you know, in the in the Bring Your Own Console <laughs> section, there's always kids playing it, and it always smells like hot death. Oh man, I man, I don't understand it. Like, you know, I enjoyed the first one on N64, and I played the shit out of that game, but I, yeah, I don't get it. <laughs> we didn't have the same choices back then. I mean. <laughs> There was maybe three fighting games at the time, and one of them happened to be that. So, and the other yeah. one was uh, WCW versus NWO Revenge. That's by true. the way, That's better true. than fucking Smash. You know, it's so <laughs> funny that you mentioned that because I have that cartridge sitting right next to me right now. That's, that's not a joke at all. That's I'm not, looking that's at not a coincidence. That game is good. <laughs> oh, that is good. Oh, and uh, just, uh, I don't know if you guys have ever done this. Funny speaking, speaking of uh, uh, wrestling games, um, wrestling games, at least nowadays, where you have your uh, create a character bullshit, um, gives, you pro- yeah, it gives you probably the greatest drinking game of all time. And I'm giving you guys our... our our little tricks and tips uh, for okay, drinking games, um, but uh, we have a, <laughs> we have a buddy of ours. Uh, his name is Zach, and he uh, he lives in Chicago, but he, he's a really good artist. And basically, what does that mean? <laughs> what are you saying about him? That's, that's shorthand for he's gay. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I thought I heard. There you go. We'll see. Isan, Thanks, we'll, Isan. He'll be, he doesn't just speak Japanese. Yeah, he'll be our translator <laughs> for, for lingo, but. Uh, he, uh, you know, he does all this artsy shit, whatever. But he's really good at making 
creating wrestlers that look exactly like us. So he made one for each one of us. And it took, like, seriously, like, three, four hours per person. And then you pretty much just have a Royal Rumble, and every time something happens to you, you take drinks. It is, to this day, the best drinking game I've ever, ever played. Well, I'm down, but how come there isn't a character for me in it? Uh, to be honest talking- with you, I don't even remember which one it was we did that with. I think it was on the original Xbox, whatever fucking yeah. game was on there. Um, uh, it's because you would never come down to Iowa with me, Dan, because even I have a creative character, and I don't even drink. See? See? He, he takes shots of water or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> but it, You guys feed him bacon grease? Yeah. <laughs> Ew. Oh, I love it. <coughs> That's still great. We're, we're all getting closer to hell in this game, some way. <laughs> but, I mean, it's definitely where, I mean, everything is worth a different point value, and depending on how many points, that's how many drinks you take, and it's, uh, it's fucking good times. That's, that's all I can really say about it, but. All right. I'm down. I, I just, I, WCW NWO Revenge for my money. You know what, next time you guys come down, we'll, we'll fucking play that shit, and we'll throw it down. Uh, and Ted is pretty good at it as well. Surprise, surprise. I will fuck him up. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know, man. I mean, that that game is nothing but cheap. And I don't know if you... I know him. him. He's, uh, he's pretty good at cheap. So. <laughs> I met Ted, but I fucking wrecked at that game. <laughs> I think I've even played him. Oh, well, maybe. It's possible. I, I know he still has it as well. So, so it's very possible that you guys have uh, bumped horns, you know. Ram head. You know what else is a good game? What's that League of Legends. Oh, there he goes again. <laughs> so, uh, so are you going to call those guys and see if we can get sponsorship money? <laughs> well, if, we, if the extends thing ever falls through, then, yeah, that will be your backup. I'll go call those dudes for you. Nice. Very excellent. Uh, Maybe we should just get as many sponsors as possible. We could, like, go to tournaments looking like NASCAR drivers. Oh, that'd be so sweet. <laughs> <laughs> and get, like, extends on my main fucking logo. Get the most League of Legends on my shit. shoulder. I'd get random ass sponsors, you know, like High V Bread. <laughs> I was like, who, what the fuck is that? Dr. Scholl's shoe insert. There you go. <laughs> Oh man, fucking Tums. That's what I did. You get tums <laughs> in your ass cheek or something. You know? uh, too bad. Uh, you and always trying to get brands on your fucking ass cheek. Oh well, yeah, I don't think uh, I can fit enough brands on my ass cheek. So, so that's why I wear. I want to. You know how girls wear those fucking shorts and shit that like say pink on my butt. Well, I just want a bunch of sponsorship. Stuff. <laughs> Captain Crunch. <laughs> I really didn't want you to look. Why are you looking at my ass? I don't get it. There's nothing there for you to dock at. <laughs> so, uh, okay. <laughs> that's all I have for my random shit. Uh, that's your random shit. That's, uh, that's pretty good. <laughs> we still don't have Michael Winslow's, people. We need Michael Winslow's. Just He's on. Submit a Michael Winslow. Yes. Do you know what this is? <laughs> no. <it's not. laughs> all right. For you and those listeners who don't know, in our very first podcast, uh, the question was posed, if you had Michael Winslow, and do you know who he is? Yes, I know who Michael Winslow is. All right. You're a man. Uh, if you had Michael Winslow True. on your payroll for 24 hours, what would you have him do? Man. I would have him pose as a cop, like as the cop from uh, 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 Die Hard. <laughs> and I'd have him drive me around, and any time I got pissed off at people, I would have them like pretend to pull them over and write them tickets. <laughs> wow, that's what I would do. He just made, he made a, a Michael Winslow reference into a Carl Winslow reference. Did you catch that? <laughs> <laughs> he might have. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> I did just do that, didn't yes. I? Oh, okay. <laughs> well, you know what? All right, take it back. Everyone, oh, no. everyone is done. Yeah, this don't too. go back. It's Carl Winslow, Winslow, Michael Winslow. Who else have we done? Who, uh, all right, who's uh, Michael Kellen. Winslow? I think it's a Kevin or something. <laughs> oh, Beast Academy dude. Yes, 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 Michael. Oh man. All right, you know what? <laughs> same, same holds true. Same. He's been a cop. <laughs> true. <laughs> See, because when you started saying the cop thing, I was like, oh, he's going to say from Police Academy, and then nope, Die Hard. <laughs> I was like, oh, oh, what a roundup. Gotta be related. <laughs> They're both in movies. They're both playing cops. <laughs> That's very true. One didn't have his own family, though. You know? <laughs> so, uh, I like that. Okay, well, uh, I'm excited for this, like, uh, last segment that we always have. It's called Sound Off. And, Esam, since you're our guest, we're going to have you do this. And it should be pretty easy for you since you hate everything. 
but uh, you need to pick a topic, and we want you to rant. Just one. Just one. Just one. Yes, just one. <laughs> one topic that I absolutely hate. Yep, and just go off on it. But you get to go for 60 seconds uninterrupted, pure hatred. And even if you go past oh, that, well, it, depending on how good the rant is, we'll probably just let you keep going. So. <laughs> Unless it's I, I, I don't even, I, I don't hate anything. Ah, well, I'm too late back for that. You know what, I, I, I just sort of, overloaded I, so much I, shit. I, I sort of, you know, low-level seethe at certain things. I don't know if it's enough to cause a rant. Uh, <laughs> man. Come on. Low-level uh, I know what I hate, mate. I hate tech. You know what, let's put it that way. The game is uh, is stilted and slow and ugly, and a bunch of elitist kids play it, and they think they're great when, you know, it's it's not that hard to be a, a big fish in a little pond. Ouch. Yeah, that was an ouch. Yeah. You got 30 more. Oh. <laughs> well, all right. Assuming I, I, the uh, rest is good. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know what? That, that, that's where I'm going to stop it right there. Wow. Elitist bitches playing a terrible game and... And pretending like it's actually good. Man, he didn't. He didn't even use his whole time. <laughs> I'm feeling salty. He's been playing for eight years, kids. <laughs> oh yeah, true story. We just realized that the other day. Uh, not by choice. Not by choice. If I had my druthers, I would just obviously be playing just about friends. anything else. <laughs> he just but likes no, elitist no. bitch friends. <laughs> true. Does. true. Well, that you know, that's how we roll. We like to be elitist. All right. <laughs> well, you hang out with whoever has the biggest dick. That's all. I, I you know, well, yeah, that's me. I, I always hang out with myself. But anyway, no, you know what? That's that's Midwest uh, is excluded from that portion of the rant. I'm talking about, uh, you know, you know, we, we, we will leave them unnamed. <laughs> West, West Coast players. <laughs> Ooh, okay, we them West Coast players post in the forum immediately. <laughs> immediately. Well, I mean, we already have Insane Lee in there, but I don't think he listens to anything. I think he just trolls us whenever we say to post something. But, uh... Sees the arguments. I like, I like how Dan takes on the East Coast in one podcast, and then Esau decides to take on the West Coast. Uh, I like this. We're making enemies. True. Well, you know what? Midwest is like Ghostbusters because we ain't afraid of no coast. Oh, very nice. I like that. <laughs> I'm going Inspector Gadget for the song. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> Where's your soundboard, man? Where the fuck is it? It's coming. It's coming. I still only have the one, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you definitely need to add more to that. You need to record yourself saying extends and then put that on the soundboard. <laughs> <laughs> and I just keep it <laughs> uh, Well, that was uh, kind of a garbage rant, but I guess we'll let it go. Hey, Isam, do you have an abortion joke? I was told that we have to end this podcast on another abortion joke. Uh, let's see. What's uh, six inches long and gets the women all worked up? Scott. Uh, Aborted pizzas. Ooh. Scott. What's it? And Scott. <laughs> Scott. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> I don't know how to respond to that. So, uh, in abortion jokes, we just keep adding segments to this podcast. Eventually, it's going to be like two hours long, like our quickest ones. Well, yeah, I don't know how else to end it. That that's, was, that was that's, a, that's true for everything about us. <laughs> it is true. <laughs> Uh, well, uh, I know that uh, some people may be uh, listening back on these to try to get some strats. And stuff. <coughs> uh, for those who are actually listening to these when they come out, go to Power Up. Okay, kids, I'm going to be there. I, these other clowns won't be, but I will be there, and it'll be a good time. <laughs> Support the Midwest. <laughs> so, uh, so we have abortion jokes. We got women reading juggles. I mean, what else can you want? I. I really and we hate your MVC. We hate your MVC. <laughs> we hate your yeah, It's a full day. I need a cigarette now. Uh, <laughs> I am worked up. All right. Well, thank you, Sam, for uh, coming on to the podcast. And uh, kids, we will. Thanks for having me. Later. We love you. Esau hates Tekken, but we love him. <laughs> True. Play League of Legends. <laughs> Other one. <laughs> Running two. Running two. All right, kids. Well, we will catch you on the next episode. Have a good one.